futures and options on futures trading involve substantial risk and is not a suitable investment for all types of investors. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. When I use the word I in this video, it refers to what I teach in my charting course or what I author in my twice daily oral and written updates. Prices shown on charts and quote boards are in real time and take into account all known activity up to this point in time. And if you'd like to read more of this disclaimer, simply hit the pause key on your video player. Good day all, Ira Epstein of Linen Associates with your metals market update for this Monday, the 21st of May, 2018, we're at 1.55 p.m. Central Daylight Time. So by now you know about the uh, putting on hold the tariff wars between the U.S. and China, working out a deal, trying to get arrangements made for trade to increase from China back to the U.S. to cut down our trade deficit. The interesting part was the trade deficit numbers were held back today by China. They don't know when they're going to release them. They're working on them. Why not? This was smart. Don't rub salt in the wound. You, you hold the numbers back for whatever technical reason you have. If you look at the metals, the silver market's responding up six cents. Gold tr came $10 off the low. It's going to finish a little bit lower than this, probably around $12.90.70 in the settlement, but still good action. You came alive in the copper, which I expected. If copper didn't come alive, you'd have no deal. Platinum came alive. Palladium came alive. Those are the good parts. The dollar index is up, but not dramatically. It first rallied about 40 points last night, got to 93.96, and then gradually sank back as the day wore on. I want to remind you of a problem. The devil's in the details. While everybody's happy and patting themselves on the back, it looks like we're averting a, a trade tariff war, it's not a done deal until it's a done deal. And we've gotten to the table with China, then they drag their feet on different things. There's the intellectual property issues, everything else. Let's see it done. But is it a good thing? You bet it. It's a good thing. Soybeans responded very strong to it because they were one of the markets on the uh, so-called we're going to tariff the heck out of you list. If we look at the weekly chart of gold, there's just nothing friendly here. Over the weekend, Wall Street Journal, some other uh, areas, Dow Jones, Newswires, we're carrying some pretty bare stories on gold. As the market is lost its way, what's going to put it up? The Korean situation seems to be getting under control. The rising interest rates in the U.S. controls to a degree or tempers the inflation there, the rising dollar. That's been the problem that the markets had. And as you can see, it's still gone down and down hard. We made the break low of the year, basically, on this move today. And yes, we've done some recovery, but there's nothing on that chart that's friendly. You're just getting a bounce. If you take out 1293.70, what I think happens is you would get a pattern of a lower low, a higher high, which signals an end to this leg of the downside, but it doesn't mean it's beginning an up leg. It signals an end to that leg. And from the time we had this bearish crossover, right where I'm pointing, in fact, we'll take it there, I was wondering if the market could get down after that and make a new low. It did the day after, and then it got a bounce, if you will but today did the job for me. So I'm pretty satisfied that that bearish crossovers hit some key numbers. And notice that the market for five days was running at the lower Bollinger Band and popped its way back over it. Yes, it had a couple of closes under it, but didn't get that big string of them. And that's always a warning sign. I keep telling traders, and you hear me say it all the time, I don't believe that you buy above a Bollinger Band or sell below it. That doesn't mean that you can't fall lower, but often if you're in that trend anyways, there's a, a better way to come in. That's all that I'm saying. Obviously, you can do as you see fit. When you look at momentum, you're oversold as can be. So as I'm looking at the oversold condition in the market, I've got a market that if it gets over 1293 in a fraction, says that it's out of the downtrend, could go back to the 18-day average, and it's oversold, not even trying to lock in bearishness. If we take a look at what the GLD did, you had a market that had first a breakdown, then an outside day up, then you took out that low 
today, which is the strangest thing, even though you closed higher. All the market's doing is running the lower Bollinger Band. There's no downside target when you take out the low of an outside day up and you're on the Bollinger Band. So there's no number under there that I'm looking for. Market is oversold and could it embed? Well, both numbers are under 20 today. Both numbers were not on Tuesday. So it's just an oversold market. Take out uh, 122.43 and it'd be a sign that it too ended this leg of a downside. When we come to the gold miners, the GDX, you have the pattern of lower highs, lower lows, running a lower Bollinger Band. You've hit it how many days in a row there and oversold. I don't know the interest there. I see two levels of resistance, 22.52 to 56, the 18 and the 100-day average of closes. The August gold, July silver ratio. So I've moved on in the ratio down to 78.52 from a high of 82.43. Favors the silver market. The silver market right now is 16.52 and it had an outside day up today. So, to me, the key is not to take out today's lows. That, that'd be one of the key numbers I don't want to see. If it took that out and today's low in the market was 1628, could be a problem. It could mean that the market's ready to go back to the lower Bollinger Band. If the market can rally here, what it should do is because it's over the 18-day average, I see this level from 1678, let's call it, to 1678 and a half, the 100 day average in green, the upper Bollinger Band as the resistance points if the market can mount the rally. In the copper market, uptrend, higher lows, higher highs, momentum up, bias up, first target. If it can rally here, 31270. If it pulls back, 308 support. You don't want to see the lows of uh, Friday taken out at 305, what was that, 80 or so? Right in that zone. Look at how the uh, platinum market had a big outside day up today. So these markets knew about the trade procedure. I was surprised they were down. There was no reason to buy them. There was a lot of reason to cover shorts. You'd been riding the lower Bollinger Band and suddenly momentum was oversold, not going anywhere. And where I think the buying kicked in is if you take a look at Friday's highs and you take a look at the market, what it did from the open down, it went first down, then it came back. And I think that's when you got the shorts out of the market. In the platinum, a palladium market rather, I see no trend. I've got a lower low, a higher high. I've got two layers of resistance that the market might be targeting, 997.60 and 998.50, the 100-day average in the upper Bollinger Band. But the pattern's no good. It's sideways in the Bollinger Band. You've got higher, high, lower and low, and momentum sort of flat right there. In the dollar index, you had that punch to the upside. The market is still embedded, showing no sign of giving that up. Is momentum being lost? Not according to the slow stochastic. Price, though, is just barely hanging on. Interesting, still bullish until there's reasons not to be. Getting under 93.005 would be a warning sign that the market needs to consolidate. I don't know if that would be a trend changer. It would need to consolidate. Before I get too far in telling you about my research, on this coming Thursday at 12.30 p.m. Central Daylight Time, I'm going to hold a live webinar. I laugh with it because first one we tried to put out two weeks ago, uh, the company we used, the vendor, they had a nationwide outage. Down they go. Last week I had prepped for it and all of a sudden I opened it up to do the webinar and I did it half hour ahead of time to get it just up and going. I couldn't do it. And two hours later, we had found the problem, had to change things. Apparently an update on our computer changed my administration rights. We think we have it fixed. I, I, I don't know what to say, I laugh at it. Make your time, try to come to it. The invite's in your mailbox already, I sent it out. But my research, if you haven't seen it, let me tell you what I try to do. Twice a day, Monday through Thursday, I write a morning update as a minimum and an evening update. Sometimes I'll put out special updates with trade recommendations or other thoughts during the market. I start on Sunday night. So last night, 
the people to get my recommendation, knew my thoughts on what was going on. I had already known what the Secretary of the Treasury Mnuchin had said. I realized we had the Chinese tariff uh, situation on a hold, which is great. And I, I also heard we were going after Iran in a big way. And I knew that we had no NAFTA deal. So you put it all together. I gave you the ideas what's going on, markets that might be impacted. So we write that for you. Then I'm trying to give you oral updates, which I typically do in the evening and in the morning. And then I'm giving you trade recommendations. But not everybody wants the trade recommendation. Some people want my research and they'll do your, their own trading. So what I do is I make that available too. If you go to our website, www.irapstein.com, you'll see it. But we have all these different ways for you to get what we're sending out to you. And with it, I'm sending out the research that our firm has on it and different ideas you've already received, the Memorial Day trading hours, how they're working. So we really put this together. Then this is what a typical written recommendation from me looks like, how it comes in, there'll be commentary, and then the trade recommendations, green and red, buy, sell, to give you an idea. Daily numbers are a way to work with window envelopes that a lot of people don't teach. I do, so you get them in my commentary. As I said, if you want the commentary only, $240 a year. You can't beat it. With my trade recommendations, it's $700. $60 a month, $720 a year if you'd want that. How do you try it for free? It's really simple. Give us a call. Go to our website. You can always click up here underneath us on many websites as click here for Iris Free Info. Hope to see you all Thursday as well. You have a great trading day.